going to show you guys today how to disassemble your Xbox One console. How you can take it apart and how you can clean and change your thermal paste or even change your hard drive if you want. I'm going to take you step by step how to open it. And even the motherboard, how to remove the heat sink. Alright, first thing first, you want to grab the, the side that you have the CD, the USB port which is on one side and you want to remove this cover right here to remove this cover it's really easy it's not that hard all you need is a guitar pick or anything like guitar pick let me see if this thing focuses right there all right next you want to grab this guitar pick and place it right in between this grill right here and you want to twist it so you can pop it open right there just like that just don't take it out just move it along the sides and just twist it a little bit and do the same thing on the other side I have the camera on my way so I can see it also if you don't if you don't pick it not thick enough I mean it's just kind of slippery right now you can you can grab your a screwdriver flat one put it in the corner and just lift it up and then go ahead and remove the plastic cover all right once you remove that on this side where the USB is there's this plastic here you want to remove this triangle and that one there's no screws or anything just put the screwdriver in the hole and just slide it towards the grill and it will come out eventually but once you do that now on the back side here there is this triangle plastic here underneath this one there's a clips that you want to separate somehow you have to hold these two apart pull them apart at the same time you want to press the smaller triangle inward and the other one the outside and then just pull them apart let me see if I can do this with the camera on my way. And let's focus right there. So I push down and I pull apart just like that. And while I'm doing that, now I'm gonna put the screwdriver right at the back here and I'm gonna give it a little bit of the twist. And you're gonna hear that pop sound, that's just the locks for it. And once you do that, you want to move down. Let me see, get different angle. Right here. While I'm pulling this apart, and again, I lost it. Let me see. I can't do it in the camera right now. So you pull down, and then you pull out right there. You have to use two hands once you have this space right there you want to grab your flat screwdriver put it right in there on top of the grills and just move it slowly while you're pulling apart do this all around right there and somebody already opened this and there's a tiny dent in here you have to be nice and always whenever you open it you're gonna dent it a bit so that's normal all right once you open that just put it flat down. Now you can lift up the back side slowly. Not too hard. A little bit up to the middle. Now on the bottom side, you wanna know again there's a dent in here on the front. Somebody tried to open it. So you can use the same dent if you want. Put a screwdriver right there and just pop it open. Or you can do it from the other end to not make it worse. Right there. Just like that. Go all around and it will come out. Once you loosen the top cover, watch out, don't pull it, don't yank it. Because there is gonna be a flex cable for the on off switch which is right here I already removed it 
this flex cable, if I can get my hands on it, is right there. You have to remove this flex cable from this connector right there. And once you remove those, you can just lift up the top cover. And that's the connector I was talking about. That's the sensor for the on off switch for the eject button. So make sure you don't damage this flex cable. And this is the top cover, there's not much to it. Also, I, once you open it, I just recommend you guys to just unhook the front panel just by lifting up these covers. Let me see if I can focus better on those. This one's right there. Just lift it up slowly and while you're pulling the cover towards the front side so which one is holding it right there and then again it's not easy to do this on a camera there you go so while you're doing this and you can pull it apart so this is the front panel at the end you can put this easily if you remove it right now so i recommend you guys to remove this and you might want to clean this cable with a toothbrush so it doesn't make any shortage all right now that we are right inside of it first thing first you have to start removing these long screws which is going to be right in the holes right in here you start removing all the screws that you see on the top but do not remove these three screws that are in, um, along the side of the board all you need to do is remove the two screws on top of the board so go ahead and remove the two screws on top of the board and remove all the long screws, everything, all the screws except these three. So these are the long screws that are like this. I already removed those from everywhere from here. Once you remove those screws, go ahead and unplug the speaker. Just pull the jack out and unhook the antenna cable right there. Once you do that, you want to grab this Wi-Fi board. You can detach the Wi-Fi board if you want to. That's how you change your Wi-Fi board by unscrewing two screws right there. Once you remove these two screws, you, there is one more large screw down here that you have to remove too. So you must remove the Wi-Fi board to be able to access this screw right down there. And if you want to replace your Wi-Fi board, that's as far as you go. Next, you can grab the cover, just lift it up, and be careful because at the where the Wi-Fi board is, just pull it to one side. There is a cable that connects the Wi-Fi board to the motherboard, right down there. Let me see if you guys can see it in this position, right there. You want to grab this cable and just pull it out. There you go. Once you pull that cable out, now you can go ahead and flip it over and there's a connector for the Wi-Fi that goes right there. So that's for the Wi-Fi and the internal speakers. Alright, now down here, what do we have? We have the hard drive, the CD-ROM and the heatsink and the motherboard and the front panel. First thing first, go ahead and remove the three screws that, are, that holds the front panel. There are one, two, and three. Those are tiny screws, remove those. All right, next you can go ahead and pick up the metal cover right there and just lift it up and remove the bottom plastic. So that's just the plastic cover on the bottom. There's nothing, no screws attached to it. You can just lift it up. All right, now that we removed the, the screws, the front panel, there's only kind of USB connector type here. So just pull the 
pull it from this side up and it will disconnect it's from there so that's the three screws that were holding it was here here and here that go right through there there we go next this is your hard drive if you want to upgrade your hard drive you have to unhook this cable right there unhook the SATA cable the power cable and the SATA cable and you can just lift it up right there and to remove the hard drive there are four screws on each corner right there don't remove the inside the screws just the outward screws right there these two and these two right there and you can just take the hard drive out and put a new one in and use the same connector that's for your hard drive replacement next we got the CD-ROM the CD-ROM and DVD-ROM same thing unhook the SATA cable from the board the power cable from the board and just go ahead and lift up the DVD-ROM that's as easy as it goes and that's that now to remove the heat sink we gotta remove the motherboard from this metal cover metal sheet metal box so first we want to remove this plastic covers right here rods right here so these two and those are easily removed by hand just pulling these two clamps together and it will just come out do the same thing for this side pull them inward and it will come out easily and this white one down back in the back is not manually you have to unscrew the one the screw that's on the one side of it and I have actually not removed this screw so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this one there you go once you remove that screw now you can remove this rod those are the support for the motherboard anyway so next you want to disconnect the fan from the motherboard next thing you want to flip it over once you flip it over you want to see a few screws there's going to be four screws right on this cross which holds the heat sink so go ahead and remove these four screws right there one two three four so removing these four screws right there also you'll be needing to remove about four screws where it says b4 b2 and b3 and b1 it starts from these two corners and let me see from these two they're like this the screws size are like that remove one two and on the top side three and four so there are four screws you have to remove along the side and the four on the cross once you remove those gently flip it over and you want to lift the motherboard removing the lifting up the power jack upward first so grab the power jack with your two fingers right there and just pull it up until the whole thing just comes out like that and then put your finger underneath and grab the heat sink and pull it out now you can remove the cover at the bottom now in order to remove the heat sink from here you gotta flip it over and you are gonna see this cross right down here to remove this cross you need a flat screwdriver and hard one and not thick one this side that can fit in between these two gap in between the gaps let me zoom in so you guys can see right there so what you want to do you want to grab your flat screwdriver and pull it leave it right there and pull it towards the other side just like that and do it slowly like that and do the same thing for the bottom pull it upward towards the up and now do the same thing from the up towards the down and do this way once you do this, repeat this once, and if none of those things just don't open, 
So what do you want to do? You want to do it again towards the right side. Once you did the pressure towards the right side, you want to grab your screwdriver, put it right in between here, and lift it up slowly from the side. So it's kind of tricky, but don't worry, you won't damage anything in the process. These are just the clamps, and you remove them. So once you remove it, it just goes on there, just flips open. Now do the same thing. For this, I just put the screwdriver right there and pull it towards this one, and this one will just pop open. Once you have these two open, and the rest is should be really easy, just pull it upward or pull it downward. And if none of those work, do the same thing. Pull it upward, so you're pushing it towards this one, and then you want to help it to just release the clamp. There you go. Now. This is the clamp. So this is these are the things that they hold the crust on the heatsink. Now, once you got this remote, grab the heatsink from with your thumbs and just like this, and flip it over. And then you can go ahead and detach the heatsink. Now you can go ahead first with a can of air or anything, just clean the heat sink and clean the thermal paste on the bottom of the heat sink. I'm gonna clean it up with an alcohol. These are the fabrication paste and they are not really good ones. They're like, a, like some generic thermal paste. Clean the CPU and GPU, just clean the die. You don't have to go clean in between the chips or anything like that. Let me show you guys. You just want to clean up the die, the crystal on top. Don't worry about the thermal paste on top of the chip. That's not going to do anything at all. So once you remove those, you want to grab your thermal paste. I use Arctic Silver 5 or MX4. In this case, I'm going to use MX4 because a client only wants this thermal paste. They don't want to pay for Arctic Silver 5. So I offer different choices. So you're going to apply this thermal paste right in, almost in the middle of the, the die. You don't have to go all over the die, just uh, little bit right there just smoosh it right in the middle because once you put the heat sink on it's going to spread evenly towards the other side so i don't want to put the heat thermal paste in the corners because then it's going to just splash all over the chip so the best way my method is this way and i've been doing this for a long time Alright, next, before you put the heat sink in, what I want to show you guys a nice trick, a oh, nice trick, it could be help you guys. Grab this, let me zoom out. This cross right here that holds the CPU in the back, the heat sink, you want to bend the legs even a little more angles, so do it like a 45 or 35 degrees angle evenly all the legs so what does this do it will create even more tension it will pull the heat sink better towards the chip so you have better contact with the heat sink and the cpu so you might want to have this kind of angle under your cross now you want to put it back on remember the cable the on off switch the power cable for the fan has to be on this side. So put it right there evenly and holding the motherboard along the side, flip it over. And remember that right there you see there's an empty hole, empty hole for the capacitors right there. Right there. So that 
this plastic right there, the circle, is going to be right there. So you want to grab one end, put it in, make sure the line is directly because you don't want to stress the capacitor, you don't want to put anything over the capacitors. And hold on. I see there's a blown capacitor right there. I don't know if you guys can see it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and try to fix that capacitor. That could be the reason why it did not turn on. Well, this was a faulty one and suddenly stopped working. So I'm going to replace that capacitor right now and I'll be back. Alright, I placed a new capacitor right there. It's not the best job, but it should do the work. So I think the guy that before me opened it up messed up the how he put the cross on. So make sure you put the cross on evenly. You don't want to cross and you just push it with your thumb. Right there. And the last one right there. And this way the capacitor shouldn't affect anything like that. Alright, now you can flip it over. Put in the power jack for the fan. Grab the bottom cover. Put down the front side first and then slide down the back side. Make sure you push down the power jack nicely in place and grab the white thing right here the plastic riser put it right in the hole hold it with your fingers right there and grab the two clamps the plastic black ones that we took from the front side put it right in these two holes Next, grab your DVD arm, put it in place first, make sure it's nice and aligned. Put the power jack, the SATA cable, grab your hard drive, make sure they're right, sitting inside the holes where they're supposed to be. there and connect the SATA cable the power cable for the SATA and next you want to grab the top cover where the Wi-Fi goes if I find it it should be somewhere over here right there and some people always forget to connect the connector at the bottom make sure you put the connector for it so bring it close so with one finger just plug in the jack at the bottom now you can just move it up and place the cover inside of it. Alright, now what you want to do, you want to lift up the whole thing, put the bottom plastic shielding, which is this one right here, and place the whole Xbox right inside of it. Make sure all the connectors at the back there are all aligned. Once you have that right there. Ooh. And if before you put it there, I forgot to let you guys know. That you do have to flip it over. And obviously watch with the Wi-Fi. And put the screws for the cross. Those are very important. This is what happens when you try to do a video at the same time. You forget some stuff. So put these four screws. Alright. Now you want to put the four screws on the corners. Two right on the bottom, where they are under the power jack. All 
a two is gonna be right under the CD ROM where it says B two B four. Now we do have to put the screw for this one in, but you need to grab the bottom cover, put it right there, and put the Xbox right inside of it. And make sure the powers go right there. So I'm doing a backward. So I was watching my video right there. Once you have it right there, now you're gonna put the long screws first. One right under the Wi Fi, remember, don't forget that one. One right here. If this thing moves, it's because the hard drive down there it starts moving around. The empty ones are only the ones that says PP and there's a 1P right there. Now you want to hook in your Wi-Fi board and put the uh, two screws on top of the Wi-Fi. And I already recommend you guys to do this once a year to maintain your Xbox life even longer. Right, once you did that, you want to plug in the front cover. Just grab the front cover. Uh, you should have plugged in before you put the longest screws because this is kind of USB thing. Now I gotta go ahead and reopen the front ones a bit. So try to put the this one first before you put the long screws. Otherwise you're gonna end up with a tight space there to put in the Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna put it in this angle. Right there. So once that's in there. Then you can go ahead and put the three screws. All right. Now you can go ahead and put the antenna cable and the speaker right there. Once you did this, now I gotta put these two screws on the front side. Now you can go ahead and grab the top cover. This is the tricky part about the top cover. When you want to put the top cover, put the back side first. So put down the back side. Make sure it's nice and enters nicely. All the corners. Once you got the back side secure, you can have the front side just like this. You wanna grab the sensor and you wanna keep it in an angle just like that and plug in the cable. So you slide the cable underneath and close it and that's it. Nice slowly just put it in place. The bottom side first and then the top side just slides in and make sure it's nice fit you want to flip over where the USB is to one side you want to grab this cover and you want to slide it down just right underneath right there 
And next you want to grab this cover and just press it over on top. So, and that's all about it. I hope you guys liked this video. If you liked it, thumbs up. And if you have any comments, questions, just ask. And please subscribe. It motivates me to make more videos, take comments, I mean take requests. And I'll see you guys in the next video.